Laura Floyd. I'm the executive director of the East Hartford YMCA. To begin the morning, I would like to invite the Reverend Fred L. Ward III from the South Congregational Church in East Hartford to give the invocation. Reverend Ward. What I will offer this morning is a combination of an invocation and a blessing of the building. And when I refer to God, I'm not referring just to God as I understand God, but when I say that word, it's God as you all understand it individually. Does that make sense? Well, let us first begin with silence, and I trust that when God hears silence, God draws closer. Gracious God, as we gather today, let us be fully aware of the meaning of this moment. And let us somehow summon the initial thoughts and feelings, the earliest sketches and visions and dreams that today become real. And let us envision not only today, but also tomorrow and all the days thereafter. Let us enter into this morning's agenda humbly and joyfully and full of hopeful expectation that the next steps along this important journey will herald great things for each and for all. Loving God, we thank you for the Larson Center, which we dedicate today. Bless this building and all who use it. Bless the administrators and staffers, caretakers of the buildings and grounds. Bless those who will come here seeking services and also solace. May the renovations not only spark revitalization in this neighborhood, but also allow the center to live up to and to live into its purpose which is to be a center of excellence that offers a continuum of services for children and families and seniors. May your grace be evident to all who enter through these doors. Grant that all the activities that take place here will build up a spirit of community and will serve as a reminder that a community that comes together is a community that flourishes. Creator God, through the gift of your eternal wisdom, Grant that the undertaking that begins today for your glory and the well-being of others will progress day by day to its successful completion. And to all those who have administrative or managerial responsibilities, may God bless you and kindly receive the desires of your hearts. May you rely not on your own understanding, but trust that a higher power will work through you so that you might accomplish great things by grace and by grace. May God look upon your work with kindness and watch over your lives. And let the people together say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Ward. So today is a remarkable day as we celebrate the community to the Lois, Narlin, Lois Nolan Larson YMCA Community Center. The Larson Center currently serves as a child development center with a focus on childhood literacy and STEM education. We believe that every child is a unique individual and we are committed to promoting each child's physical, emotional, and social development. Our robust school readiness program at the Larson Center recently celebrated 24 preschoolers who graduated and will be attending kindergarten in the fall with solid literacy, numeracy, and social emotional skills. This community center will also serve as a vital, culturally relevant community center of excellence that offers a continuum of services for children, teens, families, and seniors. We will offer a safe, nurturing, and supportive environment for people from all backgrounds to come together to bring about meaningful change, not only within themselves, but also in their community. The Larson Center is another way the Y is meeting the needs of the East Hartford and the Mayberry Village community to learn, grow, and thrive together. Today, we are honored to have the 89th Governor of the great state of Connecticut, Ned Lamont, join us for a grand reopening of the Larson Center. At this time, I welcome Governor Lamont to the podium for some remarks. Governor Lamont. Uh, say hello to all the Larsons and to everybody else. Thank you for inviting me to your um, family reunion and your community. Um, talking to you know Timmy just on the way in, you know, family growing up over here, the rock where people used to gather, people from the community being able to come here. Your sister said you could always 
get a lawnmower, get everything else you needed. That's what the meaning of community is. And that's the community in community center. I, I'd like to say one thing, a little off message, but um, John Lewis uh, passed away last night. Congressman Larson knew him very well. And uh, he said something that was meaningful to me. He said, it's not a struggle of the day, it's not the struggle of the month, it's the struggle of a lifetime. And for, and for John Lewis, it was the struggle of a lifetime. And he was there as a very young man with the Freedom Riders. He was there for the I Have a Dream speech. Uh, he was there for the Civil Rights um, passage. Uh, he was there for George Floyd. And uh, he just reminds us that you struggle every day to make this a, a better world. And that's what his life is all about. And it starts with uh, community centers like this. And uh, Laura mentioned, um, you know, I know it's about STEM and I know it's about learning skills, but during this uh, crisis, uh, one thing I've been meeting with a lot of the educators and they've told me just um, these kids uh, need friends again. They need to socialize. They need to get back in contact. Isn't that right, Reverend? And uh, that's what we can do here at the community center. And that's what the social and emotional learning is all about. When I was talking to the superintendents yesterday and a little cautious about school and can we do it all over Zoom, but we're going to try every way we can to get back kids safely. And the one thing they said was more social workers and more centers like this where kids can get together, look with their friends, and do it safely. We're doing everything we can through the lens of public health. That's the most important thing that we can possibly do. And, uh, you know, you, Tim, and Jason, and the East Hartford delegation, and everybody here from the community that made this a reality, um, it is more important than ever right now. And community is more important than ever. That's what um, your mom was all about. That's what the Larson family has been all about, going back generations right now. And that's what we're here to celebrate with this amazing center. Thank you, everybody. Proud to be with you. Governor for your leadership and service to the state of Connecticut. I would now like to welcome Eric Clapproot, the chairman of the board of directors for the YMCA of Greater Hartford. Eric, if you can come up, please. Thank you, Laura. If the governor can take the mask off, then I'll, I'll take the precedent. Uh, thank you, Governor, and thank you, Laura. Um, in these unprecedented times, it, it's wonderful and marvelous to see the Larson Center in this newly renovated state. This building exemplifies the investment that the Y has made in East Hartford and in the Mayberry community. Over one in four residents of Mayberry Village are youth, and the Larson Center will provide a place for those children to learn, grow, and thrive, preparing them for the ever-changing future. The Y is grateful for the leadership and guidance of Tim Larson, who champion this effort along with state representatives Jason Rojas, Henry Jenga, and Jeff Curry, and State Senator Saud Ambar. Without their support, we could not achieve and accomplish the many goals that we've set for ourselves here at East Hartford. We also, of course, want to extend our sincere gratitude to Congressman Larson and his family for their vision and leadership. Now please welcome the chairman of the East Hartford YMCA Board of Advisors, Ariel Robinson. I'm here today not only representing the East Hartford Boards of Advisors, but also the, the community of East Hartford. Uh, it is important for me to be involved with the Y because the Y is community centered. They have, list, they have been listening for over 165 years and responded to, to community needs in normal times and in times of crisis. The Y brings and connects people together of all ages, backgrounds, to bridge gaps in community needs. We have a local and national presence national reach mobilizing, mobilizing local communities of lasting, affecting lasting meaningful change. Every day, the impact of, of the why can be felt when a child makes a healthy choice, when a mentor inspires a team, 
and when the community comes together for a common good. I am proud, very, very proud to represent the East Harbor YMCA and very, very excited uh, for the why to deliver these values and experiences to Mayberry, Mayberry Village. I am also very proud that the Senate will carry on uh, Lois, the name of Lois Nolan Larson for her love for the community and the legacy of hope and the progress that it represents. Thank you, Ariel. And now I would like to invite a lifelong resident and passionate leader of our town of East Hartford, Mayor Marshall LeClaric, to the podium. Mayor LeClaric. Thank you so much. And what a, what a fine day this is. And despite the heat, it is really cool under this tent. Mm -hmm. We're looking at a really cool building. Um, thank you to the YMCA for spearheading this. And John, I know how many years ago, when I first was elected mayor, we were up here trying to find a way uh, to make this a reality, to really reinfuse the original intent. I remember being a congregant at St. Isaac Joe's Church as a young child, and many of the programs um, in the community were held here. Um, I remember taking my first dance classes here. I remember this being a place and a center of not only for this area, but also for the town and the infusion uh, and benefit that it had to the greater East Hartford area. So there's a lot of fond memories here for me. And I see this as a reinfusion. There were so many hands I know that had to be put in place to make this happen. And the town's don uh, donating the land for across the street, as well as infusing some funds to make some of the improvements happen and the champion of our legislative delegation at the Capitol to do that. But we, all have pri we also have private funding involved in this. And this is a result of what can happen when many hands work together. And it's what happens with the YMCA when many hands work together to plant a seed in a child so that they can have a better life, a more fruitful life, and a more engaged life. As a co-chair of the school readiness program with our superintendent of schools, we know that the school readiness dollars are well used in locations like the YMCA here to really make a better life for a child, to give them the great foundation that they can go on and continue to find education and value in themselves so that they can continue and explore and expand themselves um, into the future. So congratulations to the YMCA. Thank you to all the many hands that I know went into making this a reality. And it certainly is a, a seed that will sprout and grow great value, not only in those young children that go here, but also in the community that it surrounds. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor LeClaric. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge and thank the East Hartford State Delegation for their tireless efforts and commitment to this project. Their collective support helped us to secure $1.7 million in state funding for this project. Please join me in welcoming our delegation to the podium, Representative Henry Jenga. Representative Jason Rojas. <laughs> Senator S S Saud Anwar. <laughs> and former Senator Tim Larson. I also want to acknowledge that Representative Jeff Curry was a part of this effort but was unable to join us today. Representative Rojas. Uh, thank you, everybody. Good morning. Um, it is certainly, my name is Jason Rojas. I'm state representative and have the privilege of representing uh, Mayberry Village um, in the third district here in East Hartford. It's certainly a privilege to represent 
something that the Larson, yeah, that's right. I, of course, have the burden of living up to the standards that, you know, Tim Larson set before me as a representative representing and state senator, and of course, Congressman Larson, you were previously a state senator for this area too, but, you know, I don't quite have the connections that the Larsons do to this neighborhood, but I did spend eight years of my life running around this neighborhood as a member of the East Hartford Cardinals midget football team. <laughs> we used to practice down at Labor Field in weather just like this, right? Um, and I always, the most vivid memory for me is when the coaches would make the running backs, believe it or not, I was a running back at one time in my life, uh, we would carry the linemen up Walnut Street. Uh, I, I don't even know if they allow that anymore. You might get arrested for doing something like that. Uh, but perhaps that's one of my more vivid memories um, of this neighborhood, is running up and down that gigantic hill with one of my linemen on my back. Um, those were the days, but certainly, listen, it's been a privilege to be a part of this. I hope that this community center is the beginning of such, something much larger for this neighborhood. Um, we really need to identify some additional housing funds um, to improve the housing stock that is in this neighborhood so that we can improve the quality of life for the people who live in it, and certainly the quality of life for the children who live in it and attend neighborhood school. So I sincerely hope this is just the beginning of a larger effort and a vision for this neighborhood so that we can provide the people here all the same opportunities that many of you here sitting before me were able to get so that you could reach the goals that you all had in your lives. So thank you for being here today. I'll let other folks speak before we do the citation. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I uh, certainly want to thank the Greater Hartford YMCA for their work to uh, renovate this project. Also want to thank the uh, East Hartford Housing Authority and the Town of East Hartford for their work allowing the Y to take over this building and property with no cost. And I want to recognize uh, Jim Cape, the chairman of the Housing Authority, was here with us this morning. Jim? These new and improved renovations uh, are going to make this an even greater asset here in the community. Bayberry Village is one of the most underserved areas in the community. And with these new improvements, everybody of all ages in this community is going to be able to have a more fruitful life. So thank you. State of Connecticut General Assembly official citation introduced by myself, Representative Jenga, Representative Curry, Senator Anwar, being hereby known to all that the Connecticut General Assembly hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to the Lois Nolan Larson YMCA Community Center in recognition of this joyous occasion of the ribbon cutting of the newly established community center. We extend our best wishes for continued success and prosperity as you continue in your efforts to serve the community of this time. Representative Rojas and our entire East Hartford State Delegation. I would also like to acknowledge Tim's leadership in bringing this coalition of legislators together to secure this amazing investment from the state of Connecticut. We are tremendously grateful for Tim's guidance and passion for this community. It is now my honor to introduce Tim Larson, Executive Director of Higher Education for the state of Connecticut to say a few words. Tim. Well, for coming, I'll try to be as brief as I possibly can, but obviously, stick a Larson in front of a crowd with a microphone and might uh, spend some time here. First of all, I want to acknowledge uh, my brothers and sisters who are here. There's eight of us. I'm eight. Uh, my, I see my brother Danny and his wife Dorothy, um, my sister Sharon and her husband Penny, my brother John. I saw my sister Mary Lou and Oh, there's Leslie. Leslie, I didn't. See, oh, Leslie's back there. John's wife, Leslie, uh, Mary Lou, and Ray, and David. 
right? So we're missing uh, Lynn and Chris. Uh, Lynn lives out in Colorado. Chris actually is moving back to Connecticut, Governor. He uh, lives out in Virginia, and he's uh, coming back to Connecticut. We're really excited about it. There's probably another 18 or so uh, nieces and nephews out there. So if you guys could stand up and wave, it's just hard to recognize all of you. <laughs> youngest of eight, you learn how to uh, cooperate and take very good direction. And uh, when this was first dedicated to my mother, a dear friend of us of ours who we lost uh, uh, several months ago, Elliot Ginsberg, spearheaded this project by getting the YMCA involved and taking over and starting to rerun programs that were here. So I think about him all the time dearly, and uh, he was the commissioner, I believe, of uh, Human Resources uh, for Governor O'Neill, when they originally named uh, this property after her, frankly, she was she was out of her mind, like, why me? Why isn't there other mothers from the village that are just as deserving? So, you know, she's been a, 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 certainly the guiding light for all of us, as uh, we hope that this building continues to be. The resurrection of this place and the new programs in this place are just phenomenal. The, the stories that have come out of Mayberry Village. I see Ernie Hutt back here and uh, the Hutt uh, facility on the other side for senior citizens, Hutt Heights. This is where we made all of our money on our paper routes. This, believe it or not, uh, this property across the street was the big hill. I was talking to the governor earlier. Inside the woods, we had the Watusi tree and we had the Big Rock. Now, the Big Rock was a meeting place so that if you wanted to gather, it might be the Big Rock at eight o'clock. Of course, the Big Rock back then, what we thought was this huge boulder. If we walked over there today, it's about this, about this big. But so many friendships and so many wonderful relationships have been, have been made in this little corner of the world. It's beautiful. We're so grateful that this carries my mother's name uh, you know, I want to thank uh, Tony Camilleri and Chris Cloud for helping us get the money uh, for the YMCA. <laughs> to to do these things, and we're going to take a tour pretty soon. And so, I'm, I'm, if you grow up in the Larson family, there's a lot of Larsonisms that we learn from our dad. And you know, if I ever wanted to get out and borrow the car for the night, you know, you have to do a copious amount of chores, wash the car basically go crazy around the house. And he would just say, just remember one thing, Junior, that car doesn't run on love. Which means you better put some gas in the tank and, and, and uh, make sure when it comes back, it's full. Those kinds of things. So we, we, those are the energies that we have grown up on and the, and the principles that we've lived. We were never poor. We always had a roof over our head, a meal on the table, and a shirt on our back. And we're forever grateful for that. And so we want to reinvigorate that again. And so there's going to be a little bit of a capital campaign going on. We're going to go out and ask all of our friends for some help to continue what goes on in here. And, and uh, reinvesting in Mayberry Village is going to become a priority of our family, as well as all of the other elected officials here. And some people who, uh, who obviously couldn't make it. But uh, you know, Elliot and Lori Ginsburg have uh, you know kind of committing to putting up a uh, a playground over here with some of some of what Elliot uh, had constituted, but just a remarkable man and uh, the ninth Larson. So I just want to say thank you all so much for coming out on this very hot day. I probably forgot somebody, so I apologize, but thank you all again so much, Laura. Thank you. Thank you very much. introduce Congressman John Larson to make a few remarks. As many of you know, Congressman Larson has dedicated most of his life to public service, which I have heard was inspired by his mother's devotion to this neighborhood and the town of East Hartford. Throughout his years of service, Congressman Larson has dedicated his work to improving the lives of service. Congressman Larson has dedicated his work to improving the lives of Connecticut's working families, and we know that Mayberry Village has a special place in his heart. On behalf of everyone here today, I want to personally thank Congressman Larson for his service to Connecticut, especially for the people of Mayberry Village. 
We are very grateful for his support of the Larson Center and the YMCA's mission of developing people's full potential in spirit, mind, and body. Congressman Larson. Well, thank you, Laura. Uh, what a, a special day. Governor, thank you so much for being here. As Tim uh, pointed out, it was uh, Governor O'Neill who was here when we had the original opening of the building. Uh, and so you make it extra special by taking the time out of your schedule uh, to be here. I, we deeply uh, appreciate that. You bring honor to my mother's name. I uh, want to thank, first and foremost, the Connecticut uh, General Assembly and their delegation. And I realize uh, the work and effort that goes into getting the kind of uh, monies that are required uh, to do a uh, facility like this. And, and of course, they were ably led then by Tim uh, because of his love and devotion to this community and uh, uh, to his mother's name. But it took all of you to pull together to do this, as Marcia noted, for what is a vital cog in the community. And we're so pleased that the YMCA uh, is involved in this because of their mission in general. Governor, I also want to thank you for mentioning John Lewis. Uh, most of us learned late last night about his passing. Uh, I've been on the phone most of the morning with colleagues uh, talking about this iconic civil rights leader and just a remarkable man in every sense of the word. The humility, the grace, the dignity that he brought to everyone. I have been blessed in my life to serve with a number of elected officials. In this past year, we lost Sam Johnson from Dallas, Texas, imprisoned in Vietnam for more than seven years, nearly beaten to death. An iconic American hero. And now, last night, John Lewis both who served on the same committee together in the United States Congress. One, a war hero decorated several times over and nearly beaten to death by the Viet Cong. Another, an American hero, a civil rights leader, nearly beaten to death by the Alabama police. That's what makes our country great. That's what our mother early on infused in all of us. And I should have all my brothers and sisters come up if they would, uh, because I think it's that important. Uh, my brothers and sisters, Tim and I, uh, managed to get uh, the limelight quite a bit. But uh, as my mother would say, she was proud of every one of her children, and in so many ways, uh, they contribute on a regular basis to this community and beyond, uh, more so than Tim and I. Uh, and so if you would come up, my brothers and sisters, I do want to say a few things about my, my mom, and I want them to be here. First of all, uh, you mentioned the, a little bit of the history of the community building. And uh, Marsha went through talking about how uh, she was uh, up at St. Isaac Jones. Before there was St. Isaac Jones, that was the Little Red Schoolhouse. And the Little Red Schoolhouse is where we went to school. And I see Ernie shaking his head. It's where we went up and where Alla Otis was the principal and kindergarten teacher. And then you went from the Little Red Schoolhouse, some ended up going to the community building where they held school. 
And then some went to Woodland, some went to Sunset Ridge before Mayberry School was built. But this also was more than a community building. This was the St. Rose Church Annex. And it's where we went to church, where we held mass. So we literally, to go to school and go to mass, all we had to do was walk up the path and head here to the community building. Uh, and as my sister Sharon pointed out to the governor, or was it Mary, you could get washing machines up here. They were old ringers back in those days. And uh, you could get lawnmowers, and you could rent out uh, facilities and bring them back. And there was really an incredible community spirit here. And uh, Ernie's father, Hut Heights, is named after him a legendary figure, both in Mayberry Village and in East Hartford. And by the way, when John Lewis was last here, he was the commencement speaker at Goodwin College in East Hartford, and he stopped by Augie's race, and we drove him by Mayberry Village because he said, I want to see where you grew up. And that's uh, why it makes today a very poignant on so many levels. But my mother, and we all wonder to this day how she did it. She raised eight kids in a house the size of my garage where I parked the car, our cars. Eight of us living in a house that she made sure we had three squares a day, everybody got up and off to school. She more often than not corrected your homework a lot, especially David's. And, uh, <laughs> but she also worked part time at the Travelers. At five o'clock at night, Mrs. Pillion would drive by and pick up my mother and they would go to the Travelers and work that second shift from five to 11 at night. Come home and then start of another day. Uh, and th throughout all of that, she also managed to be one of the first women elected to the East Hartford Town Council. She was devoted and loved community service. And she loved the Democratic Party and loved politics as well. I can't say that my father was equally as enthused about it. Uh, and oftentimes, uh, my wife smiles when she hears me say this, but say those damn Democrats, she's out, I can't get a meal, she's out saving the state and the community. For and she, she did it all with an incredible confidence. And uh, as I like to say, she was a quiet inspiration. She just went about her work in the community and did things naturally because she knew it was the right thing to do. And we have so many fond memories, but we were so proud, Governor, when she got to sit on the stage. And as uh, my brother Timmy said, she said, there are so many mothers in this community that are deserving. I'm no different than any one of those mothers. And she was right and truthful in that because we could tell stories about so many Mayberry mothers. And the Golden Girls, as I see Ann Fornaby sitting out here, and I don't know if Betty Corngible was able to make it here this, this morning, but these were remarkable people who devoted themselves to their families and their communities. And we hope in the future what we want to see is that all mothers of Mayberry get to be recognized. And we build up again the pride and esteem. We were never ashamed of the fact that we grew up in Mayberry Village. We were proud of the fact that this is where we came from. We wore that as a badge of courage and a badge of honor that we were from Mayberry Village. And that was instilled in us as well. And as importantly, making sure always that you gave back to your community. 
That's what the YMCA stands for. That's what they're all about. That's why this is such an important relationship that we have. On behalf of my entire family, a special thanks to my brother, uh, Tim, and also, as he mentioned, to someone who couldn't be here, who very much wanted to be. Ellie Ginsberg was the Commissioner of Human Resources, and he worked with Governor O'Neill back then to get the original $2 million funding for this building. And it was a labor of love for him. He passed away a few months ago. And his wife, Lori Cedar, also worked for Governor O'Neill at the time. And the two are so incredibly dedicated to human services. And we are so honored that they continue to support this great endeavor. Uh, we regard them as members of our family, or as my sister Sharon often says, a delegate brother. I know he's with us today in spirit and is proud of the efforts that my brother Tim made happen. Mayor LeClaire, members of the delegation, governor of the state of Connecticut, and the greater community of Mayberry and East Hartford, thank you so much for being here and paying tribute to my mother. God bless you. God bless America. John 17, 21, that all may be one. And when I see us here today, I, I think about our first meeting with you, Senator. I, I think about talking to the mayor. I think about working with the East Hartford Housing Authority. I think about working with Tony and Chris. I think about going to our board to write up the lease to take over this property. I think about the mayor helping us with the parking lot across the street. And we all came together as one to build lifelong success. And that's what we do. That's what I love about working for the YMCA is we take infants and toddlers and we work with you in the community till I mean we have a senior program. Our most active senior pro our most active program is our seniors. So for us it is a celebration today. It is a day coming home for me. It is so wonderful to see that not only can we invest in this community, but uplift this community. We talk about the social, emotional, and uh, cognitive development of preschool. It is one of the most important steps in a child's life that he or she gets a good start, a healthy start, and that's what we're doing here today. Congressman and Senator Lawrence, and I am so glad that we could partner with you to carry on the legacy of your mom, to carry on the legacy of your family's values, and to stand with you here today and say that we're going to open this building. Um, Elliot Ginsberg was a wonderful man, and I am so sorry that um, he's not here with us physically, but I, you know, I'm a man of faith, I believe in the spirit, and I don't think that anybody that ever loves you leaves you. Uh, they always look at you in your heart, and if you listen hard enough, sometimes you can hear them still in your ear. 
So I think that I said all that I need to say about why we're here. Uh, we've called all, we followed all the protocols. I think we called everybody who we should call. And, um, and I think for the most part, you know it all, right? Who we are, who we've been, what we're doing. I'm gonna ask Susan Joyce, our Chief Development Director, to come up and thank everybody that worked hard to uh, help us raise these dollars. And then we're going to uh, close it down and go on tours, right? We'll wrap up this part of the ceremony going on tour. Susan? Greater Hartford. I love working for the Y. I love being part of the YMCA. I love all of you here today. It's just a phenomenal project here at the Larson Center. I will tell Congressman Larson and Governor Lamont that I am a lifelong uh, Connecticut resident. I'm very, very proud to be part of this state. And all of my family, my two sisters and my nieces and nephews and my mother, we all still, still live in the state and we really, really love being here. So thank you for your hard work. We have a few people to acknowledge uh, for the Larson Center and helped us bring this to fruition. First of all, I want to, state, I want to uh, thank the state of Connecticut and all those who played a part in securing the funds, including then Senator Tim Larson, um, Representative Henry Jenga, my good friend, Representative Jason Rojas, thank you, Represent, uh, Representative Jeff Curry, and uh, Senator Anwar, who I guess is not here today, but we certainly appreciate his efforts as well. We want to thank Congressman Larson and the friends of the Larson Bocce Tournament. That has got to be one hell of a tournament. <laughs> the SBM Charitable Foundation, for which our downstairs lobby is named, and they are very, very charitable in this community, and they've done so much. So thanks to the SPM Charitable Foundation, the town of East Hartford, and the report. Uh, fiduciary, fiduciary Investment Advisors, Comcast, and Goodwin University. Please join me in a round of applause for all these donors. Our campaign committee members, Senator Saoud Anwar, Sharon Fitzgerald, uh, Representative Henry Jenga, Brian Hall, Steve Jacoby, who unfortunately recently passed away but was a huge member of this community and has done so much. East Hartford Council Chairman Rich Pico, Daniel Larson, David Larson, Tim Larson, Mayor Marshall LeClerc, Richard McCarty, Paul, Paul Mounds, Mary Lou Alidi, Awet Segei, and Laura Floyd. This committee has worked very, very hard over the last several months to raise money for this project. Um, we look forward to the Larson Center's second floor to be renovated next, and the implementation of new programs and services, especially for teens of this community. The future is bright for this community, and the YMCA is thrilled to join board forces with our partners to provide life-changing opportunities. Now, we welcome you to join us inside the Larson Center for Tours of the Building. We will be taking groups of seven through the facility. Please wear a mask while inside the building and use hand sanitizer before entering the building. Groups will follow one-way entrance and exit points throughout the building, and you will have tour guides. Please maintain six feet of distance when possible on the tour. The tours will begin at the front entrance and will take place every five minutes. Thank you again for being here. We do want to have a ribbon, formal ribbon cutting picture, so I'm going to ask the Bang family who are um, utilizers of the YMCA program, uh, Congressman John Larson and his family, the oldest siblings, Governor, Governor Lamont, Harold Sparrow, Eric Clackroot, Ariel Robinson, Laura Floyd, the East Hartford Council representatives, the East Hartford State Delegation, and Mayor LeClerc. If you all can come forward and we'll take the picture. Thank you all very much for being here today.